Okay, hello everyone, we're Naked Security back on Facebook Live. This week's topic is a weird subject we wrote about this week on Naked Security, steganography. Dark, what's the story? Well, I thought it was fascinating and quite a few of our readers did too, so we thought we'd talk about it. It's about a thing called steganography and that's often lumped together with cryptography, but the idea of steganography is you don't try and scramble the message so nobody can read it, so much as deliver a message in a way no one's even realized you sent a message in the first place. The theory being that in some environments, being caught with encrypted stuff could get you in bigger trouble than having the text decrypted, because it kind of tells the authorities or whoever's after you that, that you've got something to hide. So steganography, if you like, it's the art of hiding in plain sight. And so is that the same as cryptography, or how do they differ? Well, the idea of crypt... If you look at the etymology of the words from the ancient Greek, it's kind of confusing, because kryptos means hidden or, or secret, and steganos, steganos means covered up, or in ancient Greek, watertight. So. In fact, the way we use the word steganography usually means that we're keeping a secret, but really what we're trying to do is shield the fact that anything's going on at all. So cryptography, the art of secret writing, is where you take text and you scramble it with a key so that only the legitimate recipient can receive it, but you do create this situation that anyone who finds the encrypted text is usually pretty certain that it is encrypted. In other words, it stands out as, I've got something to hide, or you're not meant to be reading this. Whereas steganography, you're keeping the secret, but you're doing it in a way where the fact that the secret even exists is secret. So rather than scrambling the data, you're kind of delivering it bit by bit here and there in a way which is not obvious. And so wh why post a secret message in a public forum like Twitter? Well, that's what the, the story that brought this to us our attention was um, uh, a researcher by the name of Buchanan who uh, decided that he wanted to figure out how much data he could hide in a tweet. Because as you know, tweets, they're what, two, you can have an image, but the, the, the content of the image is kind of controlled by Twitter. It can change the size and scale it down. So you can't predict exactly how the image is going to appear. You know roughly what it will look like. So if you want specific data, you've got 280 characters. And so if you want to try and have a hidden message rather than an encrypted message, you might agree, well, if I use two commas in the message, it means yes. If I use one comma in the message, it means no. It's kind of hard, though, to do this steganography in Twitter. Uh, so what this guy wanted to do is he wanted to see just how much data he could get in there, hidden in an image, in a way that no matter what Twitter did with the image in terms of scaling it and resizing it, it would retain. As to why choose Twitter, well, the answer is that if you want to hide in plain sight, publishing stuff on Twitter just because is something you can kind of do all the time completely innocently. You can publish a, you know, a picture of your burger in a restaurant, you can retweet stuff. In other words, you're expected to be putting mostly unimportant items there. And if one of those items happens to have some hidden coded message inside it, what better way of hiding than actually being send, sending out loads of stuff that looks like inconsequential garbage, if you like, but actually once in a while has some secret stuff in it. So that's the idea why people like public services, where they're expected to publish a whole load of stuff uh, as a means for disseminating messages that are only meant to reach a few people and aren't meant to be obviously messages at all. We've had a hi from Karen. Hello, hi Karen. from Arizona. Um, Phoenix, if I remember correctly. Possibly, she doesn't say. Um, we'll have to give her time to respond. We've got that whole uh, Facebook Live latency <laughs> thing going on. Um, so how well hidden is a message that is steganographied? Is that even a word, steganographied? Steganographied. <laughs> it's as good as any. The answer is that depends. So, for example, there's a, a story that, that I referred to in the Naked Security article you wrote about this is that generally if you only want to give away one bit of information like did the deal go through or not then it's actually really easy to hide something in a public message if the other person knows that well 
depending on, for example, the number of vowels in the message, if it's odd, then it means I got the deal. If it's even, it means I didn't get the deal. It's easy to construct two messages which are effectively equivalent, where no one really realizes that the message is conveying any information. Example we gave was, apparently when, uh, if Her Majesty the Queen uh, wants to extricate or be extricated from talking to uh, one guest so she can spread the love of it and talk to somebody else, apparently she just, she'll just fiddle with her wedding ring, as you do, and that's a kind of hidden signal, if you like. Looks perfectly innocent, people do it all the time, just to keep your ring loose, and uh, apparently then one of her entourage will come in and say, oh, your Majesty, the High Commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago would like to meet you and, and whisk her away to a more interesting person to talk with. So there, there's one bit of information conveyed through a special gesture. The problem is in this case, what the guy did is he figured, well, how much data can I get in there? And in fact, he was able to pack the entire, the complete works of Shakespeare, the Project Gutenberg free HTML version, which weighs in at about eight megabytes. He compressed it using an archiving program called RA to about two megabytes. And then he embedded it in Twitter, not in the image pixels, but he actually put it into what's called the image color profile, which is something that goes along with an image that tells the program that's going to display the image something about how to interpret the colors in the image, you know, how green the green should be, how brown the brown should be, etc., etc. And it turns out that Twitter, although it'll change the shape and the size of the image perhaps, and maybe compress it, which is lossy, it keeps that whole color profile even if it's got irrelevant information in it. So he figured, well, this is fantastic, I can get the whole works of Shakespeare into one 64 by 64 image on Twitter and no matter how Twitter scales it and compresses it the works of Shakespeare will survive letter perfect. The problem is that draws its own attention. It's not like Her Majesty just idly touching her wedding ring. What you've got is an image that's supposed to be a few kilobytes in size, 64 by 64 pixels, suddenly bloating out to, with two meg of compressed data in it. So even if you don't know where to look, you know that there's something a little bit off about the image. So in that case, it's possible to try too hard when you're steganographying an image. And if you stick too much data in it, or if you make it deviate slightly too much from what you'd normally expect it to look like, then you could expect to be rumbled. So you wouldn't recommend this particular technique? This particular one, I think if you genuinely have a need to just have an account on Twitter where you're regularly publishing stuff, but once in a while you need to inform somebody in a, in a, a very private yet public way of some information you've agreed on earlier, I would suggest that this way is a dangerous way to do it because you're not actually making the data secret. You're putting this public visible data in a place in a file where Twitter can carry it for you. Twitter can carry much more data than you can fit into the 280 bytes of text. But yet, because hardly anybody is doing this, your messages would tend to stand out over and above everybody else's. They'd have a color profile in their image that actually explained how to render and display it. But your image would look weird because it would have this unusual data that isn't supposed to be there. So sometimes hiding in plain sight, you don't do it very well if what you're doing is you're actually creating something anomalous. Uh, we've had a question from Min Vuong, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. What if you transmitted an encrypted message inside the Twitter image color profile? Well, that, okay, that's, that's a good question because um, it's basically combining steganography, where you want to hide the fact that there is a message, and also using cryptography so that if somebody does manage to extract the message, they still can't read it. They know it's there, but it's still secret. So that combination is, is quite a good idea. You know, if you are going to hide a message in plain sight, there's no reason to use regular words to convey that message. The problem is you've still got this hassle that you've got an image which is supposed to have a color profile that looks like this, for example, and suddenly you've filled it up with data that looks like that or like that or something completely different. Another way, by the way, is that if you know the image is not going to be compressed, it's going to keep the same colors and the same pixels. It, for example, it's not a JPEG, it's not a lossy image. What some people do is they actually put the image into the insignificant bits of each pixel. 
that makes the image look a little bit noisy, like you, maybe you took it with a cheap camera, and then they extract that data later. But even that, even if that data is encrypted, that can show up because when you add artificial noise to a genuine image, you don't get a genuine image with genuine noise in it. And there are actually tools out there that will go looking at files in particular formats and checking to see whether the data that's in them, even if it's compressed, whether it looks naturally occurring or as if it's been deliberately and synthetically made. So the answer is encrypting data before you steganographify it is a good idea, but it doesn't solve the problem that if you've got a lot of data and you're trying to hide it somewhere in plain sight, the bigger the data you're trying to hide, the more likely it is it'll kind of show through. Like when you try and take a gift home to your spouse in your pocket and it's a bit big, it's kind of pretty obvious and it's quite hard, sometimes quite hard to hide things because it's obvious that something's hidden there. Same way that when your cat goes behind the sofa and thinks you can't see it, if its tail's sticking out, then it's kind of given itself away simply because you can't avoid having the tail there as well. Um, uh, so that was a rather long explanation, <laughs> but I hope the it cat analogy cats. is satisfactory. The internet loves cats. Um, ha, this, this is a bit like the story we wrote a, a year or two ago about uh, the tombstone. Someone had to put a message inside a tombstone. Um, that's still a popular article. Yes, that, I guess that, that is a sort of combination of encoding and steganography. It was um, William Friedman, one of the pioneer cryptographers of all time, um, he, he, he came to prominence actually during the First World War, believe it or not, and wrote the seminal texts of the day on how to do cryptography in a scientific, proper way. Um, when he passed away, his wife had a tombstone designed for him, which went into the military cemetery, I believe, in, in Arlington in Virginia and uh, she obviously couldn't resist having a little encrypted message in there uh, and so some of the letters in uh, the message that was on the tombstone she alternated between what are called serif and sans serif letters serif letters are the ones with a little you know where like an I will have little lines at the top and bottom of the bar and an M will have little lines at the bottom of the vertical bars on the M and sans serif is where the letters are just straight lines like a more modern typeface and by interleaving these she actually um, encoded his encoded his name into the tombstone and nobody noticed for decades and decades until someone figured hang on those letters they're not they're not quite identical they're, they're two different typefaces in use there let's see if we can actually find out what's hidden there so sometimes you can take a very simple steganographic code you can hide stuff there where people might expect to look for it and you can still evade detection for decades in this case of course it was kind of intended I guess his wife really hoped that in the end someone would figure it out and uh, indeed a, a, a great and lasting memory to William Friedman. Um, we've, had, we've, we've had a comment from Enric Teller who says, but, but he's not naked because we're naked security, but I think Duck looks great in his Sophos t-shirt. I like the Sophos t-shirt, I particularly like the message. By the way, you can buy these for yourself if you go to shop.sophos.com, a load with a whole load of other stuff like cool socks and be Sophos beanies if you like. Uh, just to be clear, Naked Security got its name from those airport scanners that kind of scan through your clothes and kind of essentially laid bare without stripping you what was inside. And that's our goal. We aim to lay bare the truth about computer security. So uh, I am allowed and indeed in the office expected to wear clothes at all times. <laughs> Just as well, really. Um... So Karen says, so can keep it simple. Go back to the Twitter image. Yes. The more you try and pack in, even though it's not obvious to the average person looking at it, the more likely you are to give yourself away. In the same way that, you know, when you go, to the, when you go from Britain to the continent to buy barrels and barrels of booze that you're going to bring back illegally and sell, then if you overload too much, then the back of your car will sag down and the cops are going to nab you for a suspension offence and they're going to figure that guy's got something to hide in his boot. Even though they can't see what's in there, it's pretty obvious that you're stretching the law a little bit. Exactly the same applies if you're, if you're, if you're trying to hide in plain sight. So keep it simple is indeed great advice. Assuming you have something to hide. 
and whatever everybody says, we all have something we need to or even are expected to hide, at least from time to time. Great. So that's all we've got time for this week. Um, thanks to everyone for listening. Keep your questions coming in and we'll continue to answer them on Facebook. And until next time, Dark. Oh, I'm doing it now. Stay secure, guys. <laughs>